to talk about TV. Yeah. <laughs> Just like you're like, now I'm a part of the theater. I'm like, but wait, I have TV questions. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Well, okay. So one of my favorite people in the world, one of my favorite podcasters, a woman named Rebecca Lavoie, her and her husband, Kevin Flynn, run a podcast. It's the, the Law & Order SVU yeah. podcast. Yeah. So I was like, I have to, first of all, when they knew that I knew you, they were like, oh, the she's on SVU. And I was like, no, 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 no. I had to like literally write them a 15 page email about how you are our queen. And I was like, we lend her out to television. But like, you do, you need to know, you have to have the respect. And so they, Rebecca thinks you're the most beautiful woman in the world. Oh, that's and she was, so I was like, I don't know anything about S for you. What, what do you want me to ask her? And she's like, literally the question is, are you still pissed about how Amaro treated you before the divorce? Yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. Well, here's what I, I don't feel like the writers really did his character a service by making him so unlikable. Uh -huh. You know, like, I just feel like, right? I mean, he's such a lovely actor and, and it was so such hard shoes to fill. Christopher Maloney was such a beloved character for so long. And then all of a sudden they bring him on and they bring me on and I'm like a soldier and a mom and I come back and it's like, and then he's kind of horrible to me. <laughs> I just felt, I felt bad for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it, to me it's like, oh right, I did that show. You know what I mean? Like, I, I sometimes forget. What is it, like, so, you know, it's like the, the thing with like, Actors on their way up, like the big thing is trying to get their like law and order, yeah. you know. You Were you ordered for like 12 episodes? Yeah, I mean, they uh, they call me and ask Warren, Warren Light, who, you know, comes from the theater, he did um, a side man. Uh, he was the showrunner there for a while. He called and asked if I would play this character, and he was like, I don't know how many episodes it's gonna be. I don't remember how many episodes it ended up being. I yeah. think it was, I don't know. I have no idea. Did you have fun? I did. I did have fun. It was it was great. It was hilarious to play a soldier. Yeah. You know, in like a white tank top. Yeah. Where I was like, if I'm a soldier, we're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I was. They had me be on their podcast to talk about I remember. it. So I'm like, I'm gonna do one of Laura's episodes, and I didn't know anything about the show, and I just remember the opening shot was like the door opens, and you're standing there in your like you like your army like uniform, teeth. and the daughter comes running to you, and I started bawling. Yes. yes. And I was like. I know her! That's her daughter! Like, I just was a total also, mess. that little girl, I don't know who her parents are supposed to be, because she didn't look anything like either <laughs> It was so funny. She was so sweet, though. Her so you're doing a show on TNT? TBS. TBS. Yeah. I'm sorry, my card got wet. No, in the, no, no. In the no. When I was <laughs> in the catastrophe of 2018. Um, yeah, it's called The Detour. And it looks like the funniest really, thing ever. It's really, really funny. Samantha Bee and Jason Jones are the producers of it. And Jason is, is one of the stars. And it's Natalie Zia. And um, it's really funny. It's like genuinely funny. I actually watched the first episode last night with my husband. We were laughing so hard. Yeah, and you play like a, you're like the FBI person. Well, I play the postal inspection service worker. And so now there's a Hamilton spoof. I don't know if you guys, I, nobody watches the show, but there was, a, there was a spoof on Hamilton about the postal inspection service that was in season two, and it's really, really funny. Um, and yeah, so I, I play like a postal inspection, um, like worker who becomes obsessed with this family. And in season three, I follow them to Alaska because they're on the run. And uh, it's it's really really funny. It's Is really it here? Show. No, it, uh, so when I did season two, when I was pregnant with Ella, it was here. Sorry, I have fuzzies in my eyes. Um, and, and then <laughs> and then it shot in Calgary. Uh, it's set in Alaska, but it shot in Calgary over the summer. So how will you make that work as like a working mom? Well, I did. We went to Calgary and we oh, shot it. Done? It's done. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's airing now, but we shot it over the summer. And are you gonna keep working, or are you like in mom mode? No, I mean, I, I actually think, and this might be a controversial thing to say, but I think I'm a better mom when I'm working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Weirdly, oh, yeah. where I feel like when I was, thanks. Um, I feel like, you know, she's the number one priority for me now. She's the love of my life. Oh, my God, I'm going to cry. I know, I know. I know. I love her so much. Yeah. And, you know, it is definitely challenging to feel like I'm being the kind of mother I want to be and also the kind of professional that I want to be and, and I a lot of times don't feel like I'm doing anything well <laughs> you know um it's funny you said you felt tired when I when I saw you earlier so tired you look like a million bucks oh and you are God. like I don't know what you're talking about but thank you <laughs> but it's just you know I know the the parenting thing it's and so I know how exhausting it is yeah. but you look like you had just have it all together I, I that is 
a, a, an illusion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't. Like, I, you know, I was coming here today, so I, like, did my hair and my makeup, but my husband literally <laughs> said to me the other day, sometimes I feel like you don't care what you look like. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. And I was like, I don't. Oh, so that's what it's like being very dressed yeah. guy. Yeah, that is what it's like being very dressed guy. Where he was like, no, I feel like the only time you dress up is, like, for work. And sometimes it a little bit hurts my feelings because I want you to like dress up for me and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's not gonna happen. But so but like when I'm home I look like a crazy person. Yeah. Um so you know, there are a lot of times where I don't feel like I'm doing anything well. But when I was just home with Ella and, and it it was just she and I all day, I was not as good of a mom. I don't think um, I was as patient. I don't think I was as creative with her. It was also earlier days, and I had like really bad um, depression after yeah. she was born because she didn't sleep at all. She had really bad stomach problems, yeah. so that was very trying and difficult for me. I want to ask you all the boring parent questions, and we'll do that later. No, no, no. I mean, I feel like I feel like it's an important thing to talk about because I feel like female sort of reproductive issues are sort of taboo in general. That it's this thing that we're all supposed to just like shut up and be quiet about it and just like silently bleed. Uh, and uh, I, 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 for me, that's part and parcel of a deep-seated misogyny, which led yeah. us to have a president yeah. who is a garbage yeah. master. Um, so yeah, for me, I feel like it's important to talk about like postpartum depression and anxiety and about how, how, you know, there's all this talk about how to care for a baby, but there's no talk about how to care for a mother. Yeah. And um, in, in our culture, in so many other cultures, Everybody rallies around the mother and the baby for a long time and so the baby and the mother learn each other And in our culture, you're just supposed to know what you're doing and then have a blowout and Instagram yourselves and matching outfits And I'm like, fuck that, no, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I'm really sorry, I apologize I don't say swears, so it makes you sound not smart um, But it, you know, it, it upsets me, it frustrates me so, so it took me a while to be comfortable with the fact that I am a better mom when I'm working. Yeah. And I'm a better actress now that I'm a mom. Uh -huh. Because I think I have a deeper empathy and a deeper appreciation for the craft. Like in the past, if I had been in a play, I would have woke up, I would have woke up, thought about the play, meditated, worked out, like had all this time to just obsess about myself. And now I wake up at six in the morning if I'm lucky. I, you know, I feed her, we go to the coffee shop, like we have all of our things. I don't think about myself until I get to the theater at 7.15. Yeah. And that's when I'm like, oh, I can rest. Like being on stage performing yeah, yeah. is restful. Yeah. Will you miss the structure of that? I miss it so much. Yeah. I miss it so much. I miss the play, I miss my people, I miss Amy. Oh, so much, she became such like, she became such an important part of my life. And um, that's the hard thing about theater and acting is like, it's almost like war that it bonds you. So I mean, that's a, that's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> war is horrible, and those people are heroes, and we are playing dress up. But it is it is a thing that bonds you quickly because you have a common um, goal. Um, so when you're suddenly ripped from your family, it's really hard. Yeah. So I, I like went through the post show blues. Yeah. We only have a, uh, this clock is like ticking down. Like wow. I've been looking forward to for like nine months, and I want to take it over. We still have a lot of time. Yeah, we do. Well, what do you have coming up? What's happening? I'm doing uh, concerts with my mom at 54 Below. Yes. Thank you. February 20th through the 23rd. Um, and then we're also um, in San Francisco at Feinstein's there over Mother's Day weekend. And um, we are at the Kennedy Center. I'm not sure when. And uh, and then one other, <laughs> then a few more concerts that I can't remember. You're going to be a test. So, yeah, right. And then I, um, so I, I sold this TV idea to Sony. Oh my god. Um, yeah, so. What I'm, is it? I can't really, I'm not allowed okay. to talk about it. Tell but so, later. yeah, I'll tell you later. Yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to find right now, like, a showrunner for that show. I'll do it. Uh, okay, great, great. Done. <laughs> um, so that, and then, yeah, that's basically it. Being a mom and trying to work on that show and doing the shows with my mom. And... So, okay, a couple questions. So, do you do the concert circuit? That, you I do. Do, that. do you enjoy that? It's my favorite thing that I do. Yeah. Because it's singing, which I love, and then it's telling jokes and just talking to people, which I love. Does it pay a lot? No. Okay. Yeah. Just wondering. Yeah. Nothing in the live arts pays a lot. <laughs> yeah. What do you? And so you're writing TV shows now? Well, no. I, I, I came up with the story and the idea, uh -huh. and I pitched it to them. And I and I am um, self-aware enough to realize I don't have enough writing experience. Uh -huh. I've written like little, you know, little 
little small videos, like that feminist video I did with Connie Burton. And oh my Thank God, you. yes, yes, yes. Um, and like some other stuff like that with my collaborator, Ashley Van Buren. But, um, you know, I'm looking for, I need like a seasoned showrunner who's done television shows to really do this. What does it mean to like have sold it to them? It, it, is it like a development deal? Yeah, well, no, I, like they bought the pitch. So meaning like Sony is the studio and yeah. now we have to go out to Netflix. To, to pitch it to networks. But before we do that, I need to get somebody who's gonna like really run it. Cause also, I couldn't be the kind of mom I wanna be if yeah. I was starring in it and writing it and show running it. So I want somebody else to be in control of it so that I can just be in it and be in Pell's mom. What about theater? Like, what do you want? What do you I wanna want do comedies. I wanna do yeah. more plays. I really enjoy doing um, musicals, obviously more than anything in the world. But a long running musical is really, really hard. It's challenging, and I, I have an autoimmune disease, which is oh. like, sucks. Yeah. And uh, so it's eight shows a week in a musical for a year really is hard for me. So you like these like sort of shorter runs? Well, I can do a play for a long time, because if you lose your voice, it's okay, yeah, you know? Yeah. But I just feel guilty going to a musical and being like, <laughs> you know, somebody paid a lot of money for that ticket, and I'd rather them see my like very capable, wonderful understudy yeah. than me like barfing and being terrible. You know, <laughs> to like try to be a hero about it. So, and you know, it's like the stage door thing is really hard for me because, you know, if if you're taking a lot of photos of people and signing autographs and shaking hands, I just it makes me sick so easily. Yeah. And now that I have Ella, it's like. If I get sick, she gets sick, and it's yeah. like a whole Russian doll situation of illness. So, um, for me, like a, a short musical or like encores or something where yeah. I get to like do something really incredible, but it's not incumbent upon me to be like completely healthy for a year. Yeah. Because um, I can't live in a bubble with my kid. Oh yeah. Know? yeah I yeah. really can't. And so, um, in terms of theater, like to do plays, a straight play that's funny is like yeah. where it's at. I was thinking when you said the stage door that we are at BroadwayCon. Hi, BroadwayCon. You know, it's all, this is like, this is the stage door. Welcome to the stage door. What do you feel? I feel that like stage door culture has evolved so much to the point of like, it's so amazing that, that, that you know, theater goers have the opportunity to like stay yeah. and meet. Laura, freaking banana. <laughs> so how do you, do you enjoy that aspect of it? Like, is it more work for you? I can't really do it. Yeah. You know, I did it, I did it for a long time and I was just constantly sick. Yeah. And, you know, not because like people are, you know, gross, <laughs> but because I have an autoimmune disease and yeah. I have to be really careful. So um, it makes me sad because I've had some of my happiest moments at stage doors. You get to hear people's stories. You know, you get to hear that, like, you know, you might be having a bad day or you had a bad show and someone can tell you that something you did was meaningful to them. Yeah. And it's just incredible. It makes me feel like, oh, what I do for a living isn't silly. You yeah. know, because sometimes it feels silly. Um, and then when you meet someone who is like, I was going through a really hard time and then when I saw She Loves Me, I smiled for the first time in months. Like, that makes me feel really grateful yeah. that that's what we get to do for them. So I, I feel sad that I can't do stage doors, but I also sometimes feel a little frustrated that there's this sense of entitlement there, where I'm like, you didn't pay a ticket to, to have a stage door experience. Uh -huh, you paid a ticket uh -huh. to see me in the show, and the people tomorrow paid a ticket to see me in the show. So if I'm sick, then... I gotta go home. I got, yeah, it's, or like, if I'm sick for them, it's not fair. So yeah. um, so there people have tweeted some pretty nasty stuff at me. Really? Like, oh my god, yeah. But like, I don't care about people, and where I'm like, how, how, why would you say that? Yeah. You know, I, just because I didn't come out. I, mean, I try to send out playbills and pre-signs so if people want them, they can have them. It's not that I don't want to do it, it's that I have to care for myself. Yeah. And, you know, self-care is important. Yeah. The clock is ticking down. I wanted to ask you, like, what is your, that you want to share? Like, what is your favorite memory or your favorite experience so far being a mom? My favorite experience being a mom, I have so many. But when Ella really started giving kisses, oh. it was like kind of changed my life. And the other day I was having a really hard day. I was like really sad about the show closing and feeling like, some, you know, it's funny. Sometimes I feel like I'm not as successful as I'd like to be. Or I'm not as successful as, successful as some other people and I should work harder or I, what am I doing wrong? And I get into like a really negative space. And 
Ellen and I were on the train and I had her in one of those carriers and she was underneath my coat to keep her warm. And I guess I was sort of looking off into the distance, feeling sorry for myself. And Ella grabbed me by my face and she ran her fingers through my hair and she went, Oh And she kissed me God. so sweetly, like, Mama, I love you. Uh, and it was the most incredible experience I probably have ever had in my life. Other than them putting her on my chest after I like, 56 hours of pushing her up. <laughs> was it 56 hours? Oh yeah. God. Are you awake the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's how labor works. No, it was, yeah. And it was 56 50, it was three, hours? Yeah, so she, I went into labor on a Sunday and she was born on a Tuesday. Oh. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> that's the kind of response I'm looking for. A traditional hospital environment? Well, I was for 40 hours at home, and then finally I was like, give me the drugs! <laughs> and I went to the hospital and they gave me the drugs, and then I pushed for two and a half hours, and they were like, in 30 minutes you're gonna have a C-section. And I was like, no, I'm not. This is and perfect, I, I'm not doing this. <laughs> that's not true. That's not, that's not true at all. Um, so I, yeah, that was in, intense. But that moment was incredible, and it made me realize like, Man, we are just all on this planet for such a short time. Yes. And she's growing so quickly. And uh, it, it just her empathy in that moment was such a beautiful thing to witness. Yeah. Where I was like, you are 11 months old and you can tell that I'm sad and you want me to feel better. Oh my God. And that made me feel like, well, we have to be doing something right in terms of parenting her. <laughs> or she just came out that way. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you so much. Can we do, like for the last minute, can we do like a backward selfie on your yeah. camera? You guys, this is Laura Benanti. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're not good at this. <laughs> Are we ready? Are we ready? Alright, everybody wave. Oh my god, you're so good. 